So does anybody watch Mythbusters? <laughs> yeah. So, so this turns into a rocket if this uh, gets dropped and this ends up breaking off. So you want to make sure that this is uh, very secure uh, during the, any time that you're using this. And I need a securely holding action tank. I actually recommend doing this uh, on the ground. No, but they're not going to be able to see it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so we'll do it in the air. So Peggy's going <laughs> to hold everything real nice and securely for me so we don't go Mythbusters. Please don't do anything that Mythbusters like on this. Uh, in the class here today. Uh, but with an oxygen tank, and uh, Peggy has very astutely uh, kind of pointed the opening there away from her. So we, we, there's an opening here that we want to make sure that uh, as we do this uh, first step, which is to kind of clear that opening that we're not blowing it into our face or somebody else's. Uh, but we're going to kind of clear this opening by just kind of cracking the tank. So when you just crack it enough to kind of blow any dust or any, any debris out of there, because we don't want that going into our regulator. Next thing we're going to look for, uh, this one already has it in place, you probably can't see it from way back there, uh, but there's a tiny little kind of uh, gasket. O-ring. O-ring uh, gasket that you're going to find in, uh, it should be either kind of in, in the new devices, it probably comes, uh, so these new, new, new tanks have it inside of this seal at the top here a lot of times. So if you look at the top of this tank, you'll see this seal. It's probably inside of that seal. At least that's what I'm used to, right? Should be. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it should be inside that seal, and it should it should really uh, get changed every time. This this gasket or O-ring or whatever you want to call it. And so that device, uh, that O-ring, you need to make sure it is in kind of the center here and over top. Not right. uh, but make sure it is kind of over where the air is going to go in. So right there. And you see these two pins here. That's kind of it's keyed, so it only will fit an oxygen tank. So. We're going to put this on, and so this is now going to go on in such a way that the pins are kind of in those two little holes, and then I'm going to tighten this down pretty tight. So the reason why we want to go pretty tight is because otherwise it tends to leak around this regulator. It tends to leak around that, that regulator there. And so now as I, and you might not be able to see it, but we're going to turn it this way. There's a little tiny gauge up here. And now as I go to turn this on, and hopefully it's sealed well. Yay. Yay! All right, so it's sealed well. Uh, you, the way you know it's not sealed well, and it's sealed quite well because you'll hear leaks as you. If you hear leaks as this kind of moves, that's another sign you probably need to crank down and tighten this a little bit more. Uh, but we're going to open this up. Uh, so counterclockwise to open clockwise. I, I can never remember counterclockwise and clockwise, so I always just kind of do random until it opens and closes. But tighty, lefty, loosey. Yeah. I don't know, my brain don't work. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, you're going to make sure that uh, it's counterclockwise open, and you should see that gauge now go up. So you can't see it from back there, I'm sure, once you get hands on up here. We'll see that gauge go up, and again, we're making sure we're securing this at all times. Uh, no mythbusters today. And it looks like uh, oxygen, I have 1,200. So I have 1,200, I have plenty of oxygen. 1,200. PSI. PSI. PSI, yep. And if it's, in the, if it's in the red there, that means that if you have this oxygen tank, 10 to 15, yep, 10 to 15 liters per minute. And the way this works, you're going to find the end that uh, uh, might have a green thing on it. Uh, other ones just have, it looks like it should plug into somewhere. So find that end, and we're going to plug that in right here on our regulator. And now in order to get the oxygen to flow, with these regulators, they're all a little bit different, or these are all pretty much the same. Uh, but the regulator, uh, we're just going to turn this. Yes, sir? When you plug it in, that's always guaranteed to fit, right? Should. I've only seen one size of oxygen tubing. All right. Uh, it, there I, might be other sides, but I, I don't make any guarantees. Oxygen on, and I'm going to turn it up to my liters per minute. I'm going to just start at 10, and you'll hear the oxygen start to flow. So that means you have flow. With a non-rebreather mask, I need to fill this reservoir bag. And the way I do that is by including, there's a little valve inside of here. I include that valve to fill this bag. And the way I judge whether or not I have enough flow is whether or not this bag deflates as a patient, completely as a patient breathes. That bag should remain inflated. If it's deflating, I'm only at 10 liters per minute, I need to turn it up to 15. Because I'm trying to deliver 100% O2 with this. And now this device, in order to put it on, uh, I like to put it on the nose first, and we're gonna wrap it around the head. So we're gonna put it on this guy, put it on our nose first, wrap our strap kind of around the head there. And then this is now gonna, we wanna, this kind of metal piece we want to kind of press into place because the, the ideal with this mask is to get a good seal so they're only breathing in oxygen from the bag or only breathing stuff in from this bag and that oxygen tank. That's where all their air should be coming from because I'm try, trying to deliver 100% O2 with that. 
oxygen are we delivering with this device in terms of liters per minute? Maybe four to six. Yep, four to six. Uh, and so and if you can go, go down as low as one, most commonly we will start at something like two. So anywhere from uh, one to six liters per minute, but this is the way we deliver a small amount of oxygen. Uh, tends to be less claustrophobic for those patients that, that do get that way. Why don't you think we can go? Why don't you think we go about six with this? This actually can. You can blow 15 liters of this all day long, no problem. What, what's it going to do to that? Yeah, it, it, it might, um, the way you put these on, uh, I, if they're sitting up, it's going to go in the nares first, and then you kind of just feed your hands back behind the ears. So for this guy lying down right here. We're going to go in there. the uh, nostrils and the nares. You feed it back behind the ears. Uh, works much better on real people because you can actually get it behind the ears. Uh, and it does a great job of carrying it. This guy doesn't really have ears, and then that just cinches up to kind of keep it in place. Not so tight that you're, you know, turning on. But uh, just tight enough to kind of keep that device in place. Uh, and then we're going to deliver it that four, uh, one to six liters per minute with that. Make sense? Yes, sir. Which way do the prongs go? Ah, fair question. Uh, the prongs actually should go kind of with the curve of the nose. So if you see the prongs there, if I put them in like this, it kind of ends up like actually blowing the air out. So the prongs need to, so you see those prongs, they have a curve to them. You'll see it more closely when you're kind of up here with them. Uh, but those prongs are going to go with the curve, kind of pushing it back towards the face. You want so to scratch like your nose, not pick your nose. Uh, good, yeah, so don't pick your nose. <laughs>